G'day, it is Monday the 22nd of March, I'm Nick Wilkins, welcome to the Motorcycle Diaries. Again, it is horrible outside, it's been chucking it down here in Brum, and I have the pleasure now of taking the Ducati 1198S back to Ducati in Coventry, going to get Jigs to give us a bit of a chat through it, and generally it can be interesting to see how I can ride it in the wet. I talked about how it's just an incredible race machine, I know I've reviewed this extensively over the last three diaries I've done on it, but it is spectacular, you know. It comes in at about £16,000. It's one of the finest uh, machines you'll ever ride on the road. It's not the most usable sports bike. It's got like the R1 or the Blade, which you generally people use every day, but it does what it says in the tin. An Italian sports bike, passion, flair, massive racing twin that delivers so much torque and punch. Brilliant. Has pretty much got brand new semi slick tyres on. So uh, riding it in the wet should be interesting, especially with all that torque, and I'm hoping I'm not going to uh, take myself. Uh, well, do you know what I mean? It's just going to be a safe journey, and then when I get back, I'm going to spend an hour or so on that. Brand new Harley Wide Glide. Nice. I'm going to take that home, and then, uh, as I say, for the next few days, Rocket 3, I'm going to try and squeeze in some time on, and the Harley, and then it'll be on the V-King. And then I've got the Gladius to do as well. It's all going off. Anyway, I'm going to take this back to UK and get the train back, because I'm having to wait a few weeks for the next Ducati, so I'll get Tinksy to give us a talk through in a bit. Look at that, all shiny, dry and lovely. And like me, like a drowned rat, because it's been cold and wet outside, but here I am, Ducati Coventry. Uh, that is my steed that I've had uh, for the last couple of weeks, Ducati 1198S, and this is the man, Jigs, who is going to talk us through it uh, like you did last time. Now, first up, <laughs> this is a phenomenal bike. Um, it is very special. Now, when I came to take this out, I told you all my friends have been going on at me about, oh, it's crazy, you're not going to be able to ride it, you'll kill yourself. For a start, for anyone that's ridden big sports bikes, you know, don't be put off by, by people saying that stuff to you because it, while it is amazing and that torque makes it a lot more immediate, which I can understand. If you grab a handful of throttle on an R1 or something, you know, it won't chuck you off. If you do that with a twin, you're going to have a bit more issue because it kicks in a lot more with more torque. But honestly, what a machine. So balanced, so taut, so fast, and there is nothing like it noise wise. It is very unique. It's, it's a unique bike. It is, yeah. It's, but it's a very tractable bike, as you say, you can, you can ride the torque on it, you don't have to rev it out, you can yep. the torque and say it goes as fast as you want it to go, really. Well that's the thing as well, I think that a lot of the sports bike riders will say, the difference to this, I've been trying to explain the difference between fours and twins and everything for a while, and it, you know, it is that, you're not having to get it up to the eight, 9,000 rev range before it starts pulling, it is literally, as soon as you turn that throttle, it's like a hammer to the back of the head, the torque, isn't it, it's just going to kick in. Yeah, you just short shift the torque, it's, it's the best way to ride them as well, yeah. you know? Especially on the road. Yes, yeah, no, and, and as we know, like the obviously talking about it technically, I mean that twin engine. Let's talk about that first. Eleven hundred cc. Yep. Uh, 1, yep. No, it's thousand cc, is it? Twelve hundred. Twelve. Oh, is it twelve hundred? Of course, it'll be eleven ninety eight. I've just had a complete blank moment there. Look, I can have a look at that sheet, and that'll tell me everything. You know, uh, bike retails what just over sixteen thousand, isn't it? Sixteen eight nine five. Sixteen eight five. Now that that uh, engine produces what about just over one seventy horsepower. Horsepower. Weighs one hundred seventy kilos effectively. Yeah, 172, I think. 67 for the S. So, so actually, is a little 69 bit. 69 for the S, sorry. Yeah, excellent. So it's actually. Look at you, you polished up. <laughs> so you're actually getting exactly pretty much one to one ratio, aren't you? Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Pretty much. Um, but delivered with so much more torque than your normal inline fours. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just. <laughs> we're talking about the racing pedigree. That twin, I'm actually almost lost the words just looking at it because it is so beautiful. I'm just like that again. Uh, but yeah, that, that engine, as I mentioned before. I was surprised at how manageable it was if you're going slow, um, because you really can, do you know what I mean? If you keep it in the lower rev range and everything else. But once you get out there, it's just relentless, and I think that's the big thing as well. Uh, it just feels that like this will never stop accelerating, if you know what I mean. Another bike I'm riding at the moment has got a lot of torque, the Rocket 3. If you had another 10 gears, you'd feel you go at 1,000 miles an hour, because it just keeps doing that. Now, the engine was obviously designed specifically for that reason, but wh why did you catty go for a twin, do you reckon? This, uh, this traditional... Yeah. Traditional motor, it's always been their, their engine. So and how we'll would never move away from that. And technically, I mean, well, technically, but I mean, the difference of riding the twin and the four is quite huge, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Some people struggle to, to move from one to the other. Yeah. To a higher sort of level of riding. I yeah. speak to a lot of the riders, they race as they struggle to, some races struggle to switch from a. Four, four to, to, a, to a twin. Yeah, well, famously, you've had in the past a lot of big riders have gone to you, Cassie, and then struggled to get the most out of it, do you know what I mean? Exactly, so. And it's that kind of thing. Yeah, I find it 
I, the word I always use when I talk about it is the racing twin is almost more industrial. You know, you get on a four, and, and nothing, no, I don't mean that in a derogatory way whatsoever, yeah. but you get on a four, it's smooth, you know, it, it progresses, like, with well, this it's just, and it, and it is like that, you know, it just feels that little bit more and it makes it a much bigger sound. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think for a unique experience, I've been on the Buell 1125R as well, which has got a racing twin. There's nothing like it, there is there. There's nothing you can ride that's like a Ducati racing twin. Not, not really. And that's something that people need to get out there and test ride. <laughs> Let's just quickly walk around the bike, obviously. Now, we've talked about uh, in the past, well, actually, I think I've, I've talked about everything. Brakes are phenomenal on this. They are very, very sharp. Two finger braking all the way. And in fact, now I think I'm pretty much braking so all bikes. Finger, so one Maybe finger one finger, finger braking. Yeah, well, I've braken all bikes There's now with two one. fingers. <laughs> but, it, but it really is. It is sharp, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It really wants to be. It wants to be on a track almost, isn't it? It is, yeah. Do you get the mate box for, for the racetrack? Mm. You know, try and get them through, put them on the road, basically. Yeah. That's, uh, Especially the top of the range, sports bikes. Which this is. Well, obviously, there's the there's one above, this the R, which I know you've got a couple downstairs, which um, cool. we've just been talking about. The difference between, like, for instance, the 1198S and the R, apart from twice, they're, 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 they're yeah, being good, like, over 30 grand near enough. So, obviously, that is literally the world superbike that the, the guys are riding around. Yeah. So, this is, this is as I say, made a little bit more... A little, a little more <laughs> Expensive, that doesn't even work. Made actually, like, you can buy it and run it on the road. Yeah, now, I actually rode it in the wet, and we are talking about how much a track bike this is. I rode it here, it's chucking it down as you can see outside, it's been horrible. I was really surprised about how manageable it was in the, in the wet. Yeah, it's yeah, good because you can just ride the talk, you don't have to rip it out, and short shift it. But I think that's the difference because you're not exactly having to get up really high in the rev range, you can, and it's not losing a lot of traction to the back wheel, so you just keep it nice and low, and it just plugs along, like, <laughs> and it's great. You've got the traction control as well. Full traction control system on the bike. Right? Of course, yeah, which I had set on six, didn't I? The, the DTC. Six, I yeah, and it goes up to eight, so I wasn't complete wimpy. I didn't even change it for well, the eight, rain. Eight's, eight's a wimpy setting. Yeah, so I had it on six, that was alright, in the rain, I'm I happy say with wimpy that. Wimpy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it keeps you alive. The chassis and the handling on this. I was really surprised about how nimble it was, if you know what I mean. Um, it is brilliant, isn't it? Again, is that because of the suspension? Is that. It's just. Um, Right, really. Yeah, it's kind of everything that comes yeah. together, suspension, yeah. chassis, engine, just to give you that talk. Right, now, I know you get your Pikachu catties, yeah. um, uh, pretty much all of them, as you can see them all here. Uh, what are your personal, I just want to ask you on this, I don't forget yeah. to ask you, what's your personal opinion about this? Because I know you, you were riding in the ice and snow and stuff, weren't you? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're great, really. You really do yeah, love it, don't yeah. you? They're, um, they're a special bike. They're, to be fair... They're a bike you have to get your head round to ride all day, every day, I think. Yeah. As, as a road bike. Yeah. Um, but as you say, you can short shift it, you can, you know. I mean, it's I, quite manageable. I started off this with you really thinking that I you know, wouldn't be able to say, use this every day as a road bike. Um, I'm not, and I'm not saying this in any way since you turn the bike, you know, I don't think it would be an ideal bike. If you woke up yeah. with a cold, you were feeling horrible, well, the traffic was bad and it was wet. Bike. Yeah, you're not going to want to get on this and, and, you know, sit in traffic for a start because it doesn't, it doesn't like being in traffic. You know, obviously it likes to be ridden at a pace, that's what it's designed for. It's nice and hot when you are in traffic, doesn't it? It does get a little bit warm. But, um, but as a bike, that if you wanted to do track days on, you wanted to obviously have something completely unique and different, and, you know, it is the Ferrari of the bike world. If you wanted a bike for the summer that you maybe wanted to get to work on three, four days a week, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't. Yes, you can if you yeah, you can get a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. It all depends what commute and sort of run you do as well. Yeah, if you're doing an hour and a half a day, this might not be the bike for you. If you're, if you're, if you're doing a nice long stretch of country roads, maybe, but if you're doing, as you're saying, if you're going from one side of the city to the other, no. It, it's really, I suppose, a, a bike for someone that, that wants something unique, that wants a real racing pedigree, um, and A, can afford, B, can afford it. But also, I'm an fallen in love with it. It's, it was my first race in UK. I love the Monster. I've absolutely fallen in love with this. It's simply just one of the best bikes in the world. Um, you can't compare it to many others because there aren't many others that kind of have its uniqueness or within its price range. It's not like a Japanese superbike. It hasn't quite got that, um, I suppose, everyday practicality use that they have. But that's why it's so special because it is so unique, so different. And, um, well, look, listen, I don't know about you, Jinxie, but I personally absolutely love it, man. I know you do. So. VR next time. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, and that'll be awesome. Now, that is going to be hairy, man. 30 grand bike, that'll be fun. Anyway, uh, Motorcycle Diaries, full Monday, GK 1198, uh, S boxed off. Amazing machine, worth every penny if you can afford it. Uh, and until next time, ride safe.